let's talk about a prop firm. So what a prop firm is, prop firm is a is a company who gives capital to consistent traders. So if you're consistent and you can prove it, they will give you money. And then all the profits you make with their money, you can split with them. So there's some prop firms that do a 50-50 split, meaning you can't make your decisions just based on one trade. If we want the edge to play out, we need a, a very big data of, of trades. So even if your next trade is a loser, it doesn't mean that the strategy doesn't work. How do I add or subtract pairs in a, in a watch list? Uh, one thing I do want to note is when you make that transition from demo to live, you will have new, new emotions come in. You know, those new emotions are going to bring up new challenges. Awesome. Welcome everyone to the weekly Q&A. Welcome back. Happy to, guys, happy to have you guys here. If you this is your first time joining, uh, this is the call where we kind of go through questions. If you guys have questions about the Navigator, BFT, a strategy mode, any trades, or if you're having issues, this is the call where you can voice those issues or if you need help, this is the place to do it. So um, the way this works is just write your question into the chat. And from there, I'll go through um, all the questions. Sometimes I can't get through, through all of them. We'll kind of uh, go through as many as, we, as many as we can and I'll kind of sort them by priority too. Uh, if it doesn't get, that, get answered, you can always go through the um, go th to the global chat and then get your get um, answers there as well. I was hoping to ask a question about the week one and week two training. Yes, what's what's your question about it? Are we able to successfully set ourselves up for success relying on the course material and going from there? If you're just trading strategy mode and you go through the week one, week two content and you go through some of the videos on YouTube. Uh, the weekly Q and and especially the weekly market reviews. If you review some of those, you'll be able to get a really good understanding, understanding really quick. Um, the biggest thing is uh, repeated trades, which I believe is also in the training. So, uh, you know, you will be consistent if you just do what the training says. The biggest thing is you watch the training, you start trading, and then you start to divert from the original trading plan you learned from week one and week two training. And then you start making decisions based on the emotions and not lo no longer based on the plan. That's where most people screw up. So as long as you stick to the training and you do it according to the rules, you'll be fine. What is a good trade? What's a not, not so good trade? How to backtest? So I'm I, actually we're just about to release a video on backtesting. that will show you how to backtest on a navigator. So that question will be answered in that video. It's coming out um, within a, a day or two. Or if you go to the YouTube, uh, if you click on the BFT navigator tutorials, there's a video in there that talks about backtesting, uh, Lera. And what's a good trade? What's a bad trade? Um, we can, if you have a trade you want to look at, I can look at that trade for you. If, on, if it's on strategy mode, we can review some of those if you want. Um, in terms of what's a good trade, what's not a good trade. In terms of strategy mode, the bad trades, generally speaking, are the ones that are going to be repeated. Those are going to be, you'll see th that's where most of the losers come from. If a trade is overly repeated, meaning it's already played out you know, more than three times, that's when you want to be more careful. If, it, if it's the first time, second time, third time, it's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. Third time, you know, the course of the probability is lower. If it's the fourth time, that's when you want to be um, skipping the trade. How to display strategy mode for lower time frames for X mode. Let me quickly open up the navigator and then I'll answer that question for you. So this is the navigator. If you want to enable strategy mode, all you have to do is click on the strategy mode button up top here. And that will enable the strategy mode. So you can just see this pop-up um, just came into, um, into onto the chart. That's strategy mode. Um, if you want to turn it off, of course, just hit this button again. It'll be off. If you don't want X mode, you can turn off X mode as well. So then you have a cleaner chart. Um, yeah, so I'm on the four hour. All you have to do is just turn on strategy mode. It'll be on on, on all the time frames. Um, of course, if you're on, on the discovery, it won't show up 50 minutes. But yeah, that's just click this button and then it's, it's going to turn on for you. MetaTrader versus MetaTrader, MetaTrader 4 versus MetaTrader 5. Good question. You'll find that most people, they tend to stick with MetaTrader 4 because it's a, the bridge is a little faster with MP4 and it's more supported in terms of indicators, EAs, that stuff. Uh, MetaTrader 4 is more supported. Also, you'll find if you're looking to join a prop firm, if you're, trying to, if you're going to trade for a prop firm uh, with Forex, most of them will require you to have an MT4 account as well. So MT4 is just more supported. I would say, I think that, that was a statistic out there. I think it was like 80% of Forex traders still use MP4 compared to MP5. So 
at the end of the day, it's personal preference. If you don't need the indicators and the EAs and all that, then you know, MetaTrader 5 will be just fine. If you want something that's more has more support, MetaTrader 4 would be the, the platform to go with. GBPCHF, my first trade and I lost it, traded with strategy mode. Yeah, so it's your first trade, right? You can't make your decisions just based on one trade. If we want the edge to play out, we need a, a very big data of, of trades. So even if your next trade is a loser, it doesn't mean that the strategy doesn't work. You have to test this over a, a very large uh, amount of data. So, you know, use, you know, a month, two months, three months to test it out and you'll see how that, how the edge is going to work in your favor. It's not going to work. It's not going to work in a week. It's not going to work in two weeks. But if you, if you try it out for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, you, you'll see how far in profit you can get. Um, but we can, we can look at the trade if you want. Let me quickly pull this up. I'm not quite sure what the trade was, but um, we can see. Because I know uh, last night, G GBP pairs pretty much all tanked. So if this was a buy, that's probably why, because of the Brexit. Um, yeah, I think it was a buy. I believe it was a buy on the support. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think the trade you took, was it a buy of this level here? I think it was a buy of this level, right? Um, yeah, you know, that's one of those trades. It looks like a totally fine trade that you you, you took. So, you know, global's up. Um, Daily buy, okay, was well, so the daily time frame. So let's switch to the daily. So I'm guessing your entry was here. You took it up here. Was that the trade or not quite sure? Yeah, you can see it. What I like about this one, you can see price is starting to close back above again. So once it closed back above, um, it actually still looks like a fine trade. So I don't know if you got stopped out or not, if you, where you had your stop loss. But yeah, it still, still looks looks fine to me. Um, because you can see this here is a structure. This here is a support. You can see it's trying to close back above that, which is exactly what, we're not, what we want to see. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you got stopped out or not. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep putting on trades. Don't be, don't be scared. Make sure you start on demo first. So you, I know you're pretty new. So make, make sure you start on demo first, go through all the common mistakes in demo first. There's no need to risk money and, and do the beginner mistakes on demo. I mean, on a live account, start, start on demo, you know, get some experience. Once you're consistent demo, then you can move to, to a live account. What is Sunday scan club? Where is it? Um, do you mean the weekly market review? Lara? Uh, so we had some issues with the weekly market review for this week, um, but if you you can still watch last week's video. It's still relevant. Um, still lots of good, really good information in that one. So go and watch the last week's video. If you just go to your YouTube channel and then you, there's a playlist called weekly market review. So just click on that and then it'll give you all the videos. We we do these uh, every week. They come out on Mondays. This week we had some issues, didn't get uh, published yet. But yeah, you can watch the uh, the other ones. How do I add or subtract pairs in a, in a watch list? So, um, so if you if you have a watch list, you can add or remove pairs simply by clicking on the, uh, or you can remove by simply clicking on this um, X icon, on this close icon. You can see if I hover over it, it says remove, and that'll bring this pop up. Click yes, and then that trade that pair will get removed from the watch list. If you want to add one, just go into this box over here, this field, type in the pair you want to add. And that'll add the pair to your watch list. Now this only works with your with custom watch list. If you go, for example, into the forex majors, you won't be able to add or remove pairs into this list. Um, but you can create a new list. So if you click on the splice icon, this is where you can create a list. Let's say test one, click submit. And that'll give you a new list. And then from here you can add new markets to your list. If you want to delete a watch list, just click on this trash icon and that will delete the watch list. How long typically one or two months should you spend on demo account in the beginning? So it depends how many trades you can get in, right? So now with the lower time frames, you can take more trades. So you know one or two months is perfect. That's kind of when you kind of have a basic understanding of strategy mode and you've kind of gone through the basic mistakes and you probably you know learned a little more about risk management because of your mistakes, and then you can move to demo. So I would say one to one to two months is fine. If you do want, of course, if you see your performance is not there where you want it to be then you can wait a little longer, right? Uh, one thing I do want to note is when you make that transition from demo to live, you will have new new emotions come in. You know, those new emotions are going to bring up new challenges. And that's number one. Number two is if you had a really good, let's say you had, had a really good month on demo and you moved to a live account, you could go, you could, that transition could happen in time when we're going into a, maybe a sequence of losers. So you'll notice there's a time in the market when there's a sequence of winners there's a sequence of losers. 
there's always, you know, with, with, with trading, there's always a random distribution of wins and losses. We don't know when we're going to win. We don't know when we're going to lose. We can only execute based on the plan. And if you have an edge of the market, your losers are going to outweigh your, uh, sorry, your winners are going to outweigh the losers. But we don't know when that, when that happens. So when you do the transition from demo to live and your first trade is loser, the second trade is loser, it's important you keep going. Because if you just stop, you're you're going to not have that edge in your favor. Because let's say, let's say you took three trades and all of them were losers. Now you took a break. You say I don't want to trade anymore. I'm going to take a break. You're you you missed out on three trades because you didn't take them. Those three trades could be the winners. And then you start trading again, and then those those losers come back. And that's a that's a pattern that you'll see sometimes happening. So just a quick note for you guys not to get fall into that uh, trap. Um, is strategy mode a separate concept and is it covered in the second week training? So strategy mode is the mode where you see those boxes in week one, week two. So you know where you see the stop loss, the entry, the TPs, that's strategy mode. It gives you exactly when to enter, how to enter, when to exit. It gives you your, your risk, your lot size and everything like that. I cannot get crypto pairs to show up in the watch list. Would there be reason that Navigate would not allow me to add these? Um, let me quickly check if it works on mine. Yeah, it seems to be working fine on mine. Um, there is no preset watch list for crypto. So what you have to do is create a new watch list and then add your tokens or add the, the market that you want into that watch list. There is no preset watch list for crypto. So you're going to have to create that yourself. When I try to place a trade on US equity, I get a message invalid volume and trade is not placed. So it might be uh, your account might not be big enough. That could be one. Or maybe um, if it says trade disabled, most likely the market is closed, so you can't trade. Um, but your and valid volume might just mean that your lot size might be too small or your account might be too small. So either one of those two, I'm not quite sure. We have to check, but it could be either of those two. Um, do you consider learning enough knowledge about price action when trading on X mode already? Is the question if you're going to learn price action on X mode or do you need price action to trade X mode? With X mode, you definitely need some um, price action uh, knowledge. It helps. Of course, it's not needed, but you can, you can use X mode to learn that, right? So there's... There needs to be a way to learn that, right? So x is a really good way to transition into just naked trading using price action. So um, we have a lot of videos on YouTube. We have some videos in week two that you can review for that. If you do want to get a really deep understanding of the market, how the market moves, how you can take advantage of it, how you can use those movements and turn it into full-time income, that's when the dojo is quite handy. Uh, when will Sona be available? Very soon. Uh, Sona will be available very soon. Just stay tuned. I live in Canada and is the IC market broker recommended to one or I'm a little confused. Uh, if you're in Canada, you can't use IC market because they don't allow Canadian residents. You're, you're going to have to use something like Oanda, FX Choice, uh, LMFX. Um, those would be the three other recommended brokers if you're in Canada. Um, yeah. Is a local or global RTD to use for the daily or four hour time frame? The global will have more importance on the four hour and daily. I would say, you know, of course, if you can get both in your favor, that's the best, right? Those are going to be the best trades. But I know that's not always the case. Uh, the global is going to have the most significance. You'll see the local kind of switching throughout the day. That's why it's important to always go price action first, then the levels, and then at the last thing on OCAD is the RTD because it does the local does change quite a bit over the over the course of the day. No problem, Randy. Do you guys have any other questions? We got eight more minutes. Can you elaborate on the risk towards an extension trades? GBPCHF, 4 hour by default, TP1 is RR, 2.4, TP3 is 2.7. So the overall trade yeah. is always going to be sitting around 1.7. Um, I don't look at too much of um, the risk reward between the TPs. What I care about is, you know, am I making money? Uh, that's really what it matters. So with these trades, you know, if you keep putting them on, the probability will already be in your favor, as long as they move to break even when you hit TP1. Um, because there's going to be a lot of trades that, that will go to TP2 and TP3, but you have to you have to put those on. So if you miss trades, if you only, you know, let's say you only, sometimes what some people do is they only put on one position instead of three or two positions, and they um, don't have that extra position to go to TP2, you know, that then your risk toward will be skewed because you, you can't always go to that extra level. Um, what, what you'll notice is what, with, one, the, with the 1.7 risk toward ratio of the overall trade, that you'll be able to miss quite a bit of trades. So if you move your stop loss, you're more likely to hit to hit it. But if you just leave it at 1.7, uh, you'll be much better off. What's special about the dojo? Um, I think most people, what they enjoy about the dojo is the, the small group. So what you get added to a small accountability group, 
with six people, uh, or I would say up to up to six people. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four, five, or six. Um, and this group is basically going to be learning with this group, and they're going to keep you accountable. And you're going to keep them accountable. You guys will go through the same trading journey because it's trading alone is, is hard and you want someone on the side that kind of goes alongside with you and is at the same step or at the same stage as you. So that's where people, they like that the most, just, just the individual groups. Um, and then from there, having really everything you need to become consistent. So the dojo gives you a really good foundation you can use to become consistent. And then from there, apply to a prop firm and then work with a prop firm to get access to more capital, trading capital. So if we have, you know, we have people in the dojo trading six figures, seven figures, um, you know, fifty thousand dollar accounts, hundred thousand dollar accounts, five hundred thousand uh, accounts. So if you want to get to the point, the dojo really accelerates the process. Of course, you don't need the dojo to be consistent, but if you want to accelerate it, uh, the dojo uh, helps with that quite a bit. Where do you lock your wins and losses on the system or a spreadsheet? I have a different spreadsheet, George. And if you join the dojo, I'll give you mine, the one I use. Uh, is there a broker for UK? Yep. If you're in the UK, uh, you can use IC Markets. That one is really good if you're in the UK. What advice to not hold trades over the weekend? Does that include trades on the daily time frame? So the daily time frame, you can hold them over the weekend. That's totally fine. If you're trading one hour, four hour, you know, if you're in profit at the end of the week, just close them. Uh, it's worth it. Uh, for the daily trades, you can keep them open over the weekend. Are there any account minimums for Oanda? Uh, it might be it might be a hundred bucks or maybe a thousand. I'm not quite sure. I know that's a big difference. Uh, let me quickly Google this for you. Okay, so there's there's no minimum it says here. But yeah, you know it's not really worth it going below a hundred bucks. So I mean whatever you can afford. But if you're if you you can only deposit a hundred bucks, uh, then I would look at okay how can I increase my income first? Because you want to be able you want to be in a position where for strategy mode at least where you can deposit a thousand. Of course, if you, want, if you just want to kind of learn it and get the hang of it, then, you know, 500 bucks, 300 bucks, just to figure it out, it works. But it's much harder to do proper risk management with a smaller account. It's, it's much harder. And it's much easier to do proper risk management if you have a bigger account. And a thousand really isn't that big. Um, I know for some people it is, but in trading, it's, it's a small account. Whereas lots of people screw up is... They want to, they start, let's say, with a thousand dollar account. They want to turn this thousand dollar into 10,000 and 20 and 50 and 100,000. It's a good goal, but it's not the right approach. The thing is, if you start with a thousand dollar account, you want to build it up and compound it to, let's say, 100 grand or 50 grand or 10 grand or five grand. Because you're chasing those compounds, you're going to try to rush trades uh, because you want to achieve that goal. Um, so that, that type of thinking that you can take a thousand dollar account and turn it into you know a million, it's, it's gonna be very hard. Because during the process, when you when you start to compound your money, there's emotions that come in. So let's say you turn it to thousand to 5,000. Um, and then because you've compounded so much, you're gonna start to let loose. And once you start to let loose, you're gonna get, get some losers. And then you're gonna, you're gonna be mad at yourself that you lost the money that you've compounded because you've never withdrawn anything. You've never used it to pay your bills. And that's going to put you into a very bad emotional state. So what I what I tell, tell people is, you, if you get some profits, withdraw them, use it for something to buy, pay your phone bill with it, do something with your profits. Don't just compound. Because if you just focus on compounding, you're going to mess up pretty soon. Um, now that's one thing. The other thing is, instead of risking thousand dollar on a, on an account and try and turn to compound that, take that money, find a really good prop firm that's that suits your trading style, and then invest that thousand dollars into the prop firm. But first, before you do that, you have to prove to yourself that you're consistent. Once you're consistent, take that thousand bucks, put it into prop firm, and then you're going to get access to, you know, 50 to to $100,000 that you can trade. So the risk to reward ratio on that is much better. So, you know, you pay a thousand, you can trade, you know, 50,000 or, or you pay a thousand, you trade, you know, I don't know, 300,000, whatever that number will be, depending on, depending on the prop firm. Um, and then your risk is pretty much zero, right? Because you... You've gave them, let's say, 800 bucks. You pass the challenge. You got 800 bucks back. You're done. You're not risking anything. You're risking their money. So from there, you know, the, the, the trades you take, they're going to have a much bigger return, much bigger impact on your life. And from there, with those profits, you can start to build your own account. Um, is MT4, MT5 the software used to trade? Yes, that's the one. Say you put on a trade long, for example, and you already know what your targets and stop loss are going to be. Can you put a limit order for your targets and stop loss at the same time? Yeah, so we only enter with limit orders. So when you wanna, let's say you wanna buy something, you enter with the buy limit 
And when you open a buy limit, you want to have a stop loss and a, and a take profit preset. Uh, it's, it's very important you do that, especially the, the stop loss. Where do we place your money? So the money is, that's the broker side. We don't deal with any funds. We're just a education and, and software company. The, the funds that you want to deposit into your broker, that will be on the broker side. And every broker is different. So you will have to check with your broker how they do that. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't help with that too much. I see market says it charges $20 for international withdrawals. I'm not sure. I don't use them. So again, I don't know. You would you would have to look at that information on their website. Uh, you can you can worry about withdrawing money once once you've you've made some profits. We're talking about investing your money with a professional broker where we have zero risk. So no, I was I was talking about a prop firm. So what a prop firm is, a prop firm is a is a company who gives capital to consistent traders. So if you're consistent and you can prove it, they will give you money. And then all the profits you make with their money. You can split with them. So there's some prop firms that do a 50-50 split, meaning you get to keep 50% of the profits, they get to keep 50. Some have you know 60-40 split where you where you keep 60%, they take 40% of the profits. Um, so uh, it's not a broker, it's just a prop firm that gives you access to trading capital once you're consistent. Um, that's the kind of the, the simple terms of it. Um, so what people do is you know they start on demo, they get consistent, they get some results, and then from there they go try to work with a prop firm. Um, so if that's sounds, if that sounds intriguing to you, if you want to learn more about that, you can check out the dojo. That's what kind of what we help with is get people to a point where they're consistent and where they, they can start to work with prop firms. A question is when I have those numbers already targets and stops, what limit order is placed? Like, and I cannot put a settlement order on all my coins and put a stop loss order on all the coins as well. Um, okay. So I'm guessing you're using a crypto broker, right? Something like Binance. If you use Binance, they have a, um, um, at least in the futures, they have a thing where you can put your stop loss in TP. So not, and that would, it would be called stop loss and TP. So um, that would be the way to do it. So we'd have your, let's say you want to uh, sell Bitcoin, right? So you would, I want to sell at 10,000. I did, the price is higher now, but let's say oh, you want to sell at, let's say you want to sell at 20,000. So you, you put a sell limit on 20,000 and then you can put a stop loss on, let's say 21,000. Your TP would be on uh, 15,000. So Binance will, it will let you do that. Uh, under the futures trading panel. Uh, if you're trading spots, I'm not quite sure. Um, I think you would still have that ability. It would just be called something else. I think it would be a stop limit order. And then the other one would be a sell limit. But if you that, they actually have a, a resource in this too. If you just Google it, they have a, a, a kind of a help desk where they explain how to use the stop loss on, on spot. So if you if you can have a quick read, read through that, but I think it's called the stop um, stop loss limit, but you might want to double check. And if you need help, just send me a message and then I'll, I'll look. How do you find your trade for the day? I'm working full time and I don't know when is the best time to find trades for the day. So for you, Lara, you know, strategy mode is going to be nice. Uh, just look, you know, at the morning in the evening, whenever, whenever you have time, go through the markets and see what kind of trades you can find. If there's that, something that you like, just put it on and that's it. So just find, you know, time in the mornings or in the evenings or even just once a week, if you can, you know, Monday morning or whatever. Uh, strategy mode doesn't take a lot of time. So if you see it, you confirm it, make sure it's not to repeat it and you set up the trade. Now for me, you know, I've, I have time, I'm a day trader. So I, you know, I go to charts in the morning, I look at my, my peers, the ones I trade the most, and I see if I can find a good trading setup. If I like it, then I'm, I take it. But for someone who has a job, who has less time, you know, the one hour, four hour and daily, those are gonna be the best time frames for you. So if you see a trade on strategy mode, just set it up. Um, if you're using X mode, same thing, you know, the four hour time frame would probably work well. If you see a opportunity, set it up with your buy limit and sell limit and then just let the trade play out. All right, guys, that sums up our Q&A for this week. If you guys have further questions, you can put them into the global chat and I'll be back next week, Monday. So feel free to, to join up next week as well. I always have fun talking to you guys. Um, yeah, and then make sure to check out the other big weekly Q&As on YouTube. And um, let me see if I missed anything. Looks like I didn't, okay. Yeah, and like I said, make sure to join the Google chat if you guys have further questions. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.